Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing 50 facts about myself, except I don't actually have 50 questions, I only have 44 questions, so technically it's 44 facts about myself. So if you guys didn't know that I did post something on my YouTube channel, so I'll show you where it is so that next time you guys can see my posts and then uh, reply to them. So when you come to my channel over here, you're going to notice that there's a community tab over here, so make sure to click on the community tab, and when you do, there's going to be all these posts over here. So you can see over here that I posted something about uh, 50 facts about myself and you can ask questions. So you literally just click here and there'll be a little text box and you can type whatever questions you want. You can see there's a whole bunch of people that type questions and I took their questions and I'm going to be answering most of them. And so by coming to the community tab, you can stay updated with all the stuff that I post. But without further ado, today we're going to be answering all of these questions. There's 44 questions total, and so I'll go through them one at a time. So uh, let's begin. So the first question is, what is my real name? My real name is KJ Chen. So KJ first name, Chen is last name. And I'm more than happy for people to just call me Caro or Caro B. It's, it doesn't make a difference to me. I don't really care that much. Second question, what is my blood type? I am blood type O. So, you know, just normal, everyday Asian. Every, most people are O, but uh, apparently this is a big thing in Asia. A lot of people care about it. I personally don't care too much about it. Three, what is my horoscope? I am Aquarius. So I was born on February 16th, so I am an Aquarius. Uh, four, how old am I? I am currently 30. I am heading towards 31. What kind of music genre do you like to listen to the most? I like to listen to anime piano or anime classical. It's kind of a mix. It's like anime music, like their uh, their openings and their endings, but played on the piano or violin or you know strings, classical style. I just I just like that. It's really relaxing and chill. Uh, how is your figurine collection doing? It's going okay. I haven't been buying any figurines recently because I just haven't gone anywhere like the only time I really buy figurines is when I go to Japan and Japan so I haven't gone to Japan in a year now so I haven't had the chance to uh, buy any new figurines but you know who knows if I do get the chance to go there again I will be buying more how many anime figures and nendroids do you have so you guys can probably see here at the side that's one two three four five six so I've got six over here and then what you guys don't see is up there, like, I have another shelf up there. And there's like four or five more there. But those ones on the shelves up there are a lot bigger. So you can see these ones are a lot bigger. So this one is the Diva Mech that you can see. And then I got a few others up there that I can't actually reach because I put them too high and I can't reach them. So, uh... <laughs> Too bad. Um, I don't really have that many Nendroids. I only have two Nendroids. So the two Nendroids that I have is one is Aqua. So you know, you've seen this one before. I really like Aqua because she's a useless goddess. And the second Nendroid I have is Shiro from uh, No Game No Life. She's one of my favorite characters as well because she's so clueless but so smart. And the rest of my figurines are actually like big scale ones. Do I like sweets? Um, depends. I don't really like candy type of sweets, but I'm okay with ice cream. I really like ice cream. I really like dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, it's kind of like, you know, it can't just be uh, sugar sweet. It has to kind of have like, like a texture. So, um, I mean, depends how you define sweets, right? I, I think sweets are all right. Uh, what is my favorite food? My favorite food would probably be lasagna, pizza or some sort of carbonara or some sort of white sauce pasta it's pretty good you know i've always liked italian food because italian food is just it's just comfort food for me it's comfort food my favorite anime my favorite anime of all time is no game no life hands down no game no life because i just really like the characters i really like the story and it's just really funny that's why it's my favorite anime Best anime of 2019. Best anime of 2019 is probably Dr. Stone. I really like Dr. Stone because of how mundane the actual situation is, but how interesting they make it and how crazy the animation is for their faces. Um, another runner up would be uh, Cautious Hero. I definitely love Cautious Hero. So these two are 
probably tied in first place for best anime in 2019 for me. Um, next is, what place do you want to visit the most in the world? I'd probably want to visit Japan again. I mean, I went to Japan once, right? But I only stayed in Tokyo. I didn't go anywhere else. So I would like to explore more of Japan for sure. Okay, next question is, if you could cosplay any character from a game or anime, who would it be? I like um, Roy Mustang from Full Metal Alchemist. I really like that character. I don't think I could pull off a cosplay of him, but uh, you know, I really do like that character. He's really cool. What languages do you speak? So I speak English. And yeah, the rest is really like I know one or two phrases. Like there's Hanyo Haseyo, Kamsumida, that's Korean. Konnichiwa, Konbanwa, that's Japanese. And then we've got Kapun uh, Kap, which is Thai. You just pick up a couple phrases, like one or two lines. But uh, as for languages that I'm very comfortable in, like I would consider myself fluent, would be English, Mandarin, and Cantonese. Are you currently in a relationship? Nope, I am currently single. How do you manage gaming life with real life when it comes to work slash university? So what I did was I reduced as much downtime as possible. So there's a lot of downtime that you guys might not realize that you actually do. Like when you come back home, you're tired, you eat dinner, and then you find out that you kind of waste a lot of time watching YouTube or watching movies or just, just staring off into space. Like you spend a lot of time just not doing anything productive. And so what I did was I came back from work and I had a game plan already set. It was like, I come back, okay, so this time to this time, this schedule was, I'm gonna, I was gonna eat. I was gonna take a warm shower, freshen up, and then I was gonna play video games. And the thing about video games, especially in MMOs, is it's very difficult to get started by yourself. It's much easier to start an MMO when you have a group of friends. So what I did was I scheduled a specific time that I would do my daily challenge. So everyone knows when I would be on to do daily challenge every single day. And I still uphold the schedule even up to today. And that is whenever the server resets for the next two hours, I will play Blade and Soul. And that is my schedule every single day. And because I have this set schedule, people always know when I'm online. Then people kind of grow accustomed to it and then they schedule their schedules based off mine because they know that I'll always be online then, so they know that, okay, Kara's gonna find a group, Kara's gonna organize everything, and then we'll be able to do a daily train or a purple train. And so that's how I managed it. So for me, it is reset time, which is my 8 p.m. So every day, 8 p.m., I'll always be on Blade and Soul. I'll already be an F8, putting out a room number in my guild, telling people, okay, if anyone wants to do purple train, just join this room number, and we're ready to go. Once it fills up, we start. And that's what I always do. And another thing that I do is I preemptively post it out. So the moment I wake up, I turn on my computer, I go onto my Discord, I immediately type, oh, if anyone's interested in doing a purple train tonight, please react. And so by the time I come back from work, I don't need to worry about, oh, are, are, do we have enough people for purple train or do I need to look for people? Immediately, I just look at the reacts and I'll know that, okay, so today we have four people. Oh, today we have a full party. And thus, I don't need to worry about things. And so I save a lot of downtime because I basically preemptively organized everything so that I don't waste time. And that is a really big thing for me because I go to work, I come back, I'm tired. But when I wake up in the morning, I'm still fresh. So when I'm still fresh, I do all the prep work so that when I come back from work and I'm tired, I, everything's already organized for me and good to go. And that's what I did in order to balance my work life and my gaming life, just making gaming a lot more efficient. So next question is, what is my job? So I used to run a restaurant, I used to own a restaurant, and it was very, very stressful because I owned three restaurants actually. So, you know, running a restaurant's not easy. It's not easy at all because customer is king, and you have to do marketing, you have to make sure that your customers and your clientele are satisfied, they're happy, they're willing to become return customers, and it's not an easy job. And I got the opportunity, I guess mid of 2019, uh, I had the opportunity to sell my company. So I decided to take it because they offered a good amount of money, so I decided to sell my company. 
And so now I'm basically retired. However, I will be focusing a lot of my efforts onto YouTube because I enjoy doing YouTube. And another big important thing for me on YouTube is it's very flexible. I'm able to work anywhere basically as long as there's an internet connection and as long as I have my laptop, I'm good to go because it's real it's literally just record videos, edit them, upload them, we're good to go. And the very nice thing I like about it is you can preemptively uh, schedule a lot of videos beforehand. So even though you're on vacation, it doesn't feel that bad because you already have a bunch of videos scheduled. So that is definitely a very nice change of pace because when I was in the restaurant business, everything was on the fly. You can never take a proper vacation because if a VIP client said, oh, I wanna eat at your restaurant tonight, it doesn't matter where you are. You gotta be there at your restaurant to, to serve that VIP client. And it's, you know, that type of stress really, uh, really gets to you after a while. So it's definitely very nice that I kind of have this freedom to do whatever the heck I want now. Question 17. Have you ever been to Japan or South Korea? I have been to both. I have been to Japan and I have been to South Korea. Um, in Korea, I went, I basically stayed most of my time in Gunnam. So that is like the party district of South Korea because one of my friends was getting married and he booked my hotel down at uh, Gunnam. And um, I think I actually spent most of my time in a PC bomb in South Korea. I actually spent most of my time in a PC bomb because by the time I went there, it was when Overwatch first came out. And so I was totally hooked onto Overwatch. And uh, it's kind of a shame. I should have spent more time socializing, more time like going around. But no, I spent most of my time playing video games. I can't say I'm too proud about that, but it is what it is. I like video games. In Japan, on the other hand, I spent most of my time in Akihabara because I love anime. And yeah, I just basically did anime shopping for like five days out of the seven days I was there. It was crazy. The other days I just spent eating. Japan's great for food. Um, question 18. If you could be a girl, how do you want to look like? How would you like to look like? Um, interesting question, I guess. Um, probably like this. Mm, I don't know. Okay, question 19. Things you dislike. There's a lot of things I dislike, honestly. So on a serious note, things that I dislike would probably be ego. I really don't like people with huge egos, uh, myself included. I know that I have a huge ego, but I keep it in check. And there's one philosophy that I always had that I don't know how to really explain in English, but let's say you have five fingers. So you have five fingers, so four of your fingers are always pointing at yourself, and one finger is pointing at someone else. So when something goes wrong, I always blame myself first. And I make sure, I look at the four fingers that are pointing at myself, I make sure that I personally did not do anything wrong, or I did everything in my power to make the situation the best that it could be. If that is a fact that I have tried my best, and that the situation is still dire, then I will look at the one finger pointing at someone else and being like, okay, how do we improve that person's situation? Or how do we change that person's mentality to resolve the issue? And so in most cases, I'm very judgmental about myself, but I'm not very judgmental about others. And unfortunately, a lot of people due to culture differences have the opposite mentality. Whenever something goes wrong, they immediately blame someone else. And that is just a culture thing that a lot of people like to blame others and they don't like to look at themselves. Because if you look at yourself and analyze yourself critically, you'll find out that you have a lot of flaws. And this is just the harsh truth. And so people's ego really gets in the way of clear communication and resolving issues quickly. Um, because people don't like to have their egos hurt. And so I really don't like having a big ego and I really don't like other people who get very defensive because of their ego. So that's one thing that I don't like. It's just something that comes with the culture, comes with your upbringing, and it's not something that's easily changed, unfortunately. However, slowly but surely with time, it's definitely possible to change that. Yeah, that is probably one of the biggest things that I dislike. I really don't like people with big egos. Another thing that I really don't like is I don't like people down talking other people in order to gain an advantage 
That is basically a taboo in my books. I strongly believe in karma. And I don't think that by pushing people down in order to get yourself higher, that is not a very smart strategy. Like even in business, in business, I've always strongly believed in a win-win situation. It's if you are partnering up with another party and you're working with someone else, it has to be a win-win situation. You have to win because you got to look out for yourself, but the party that you're working with also has to win. They also have to get something out of the situation, which is positive for them. Only then can you have a long lasting partnership and a relationship with another company. Because if it's a win-lose situation where you gain all the benefits, but they lose, they're not going to work very long with you because they're not gaining anything. They're losing. And it's the same thing with content creation. You guys have to work off each other and make each other better. There's a saying where it's one plus one equals three. And a lot of people are like, no, it's one plus one equals two. But because you have so much value added on top of each other, when you work together, you gain more than if you worked alone. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't really understand. Next, uh, do I like cats or dogs? I'm more of a cat person. Who is your waifu? My waifu is probably Hestia. I really like Hestia. I like Aqua a lot as well. Um, probably those two. Yeah, Hestia and Aqua. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is purple. As a Chinese, how do you get so good at English? So I, w I lived in Hong Kong when it was under British rule. So I moved to Hong Kong in like 1990 or 1989 even. And so I lived in Hong Kong under British rule. So I studied in a British school. So I had to speak English and Chinese. I learned both languages at the same time when I was young. And so I had a British accent. But then when I did my middle school, I went to Shanghai and I studied at an American school. And all the kids made fun of my accent because I spoke British English instead of American English. And so I, out of peer pressure, I switched my accent. And that's the current accent that you guys hear now. It's the uh, American accent. And that's how I got good at English. People made fun of me, peer pressure, and yeah, you just work really hard when you're a kid and you want to fit in because of peer pressure. <laughs> all right. What's the hardest thing you've ever worked on towards your life and or in a game? Um, I would say the hardest thing that I worked towards in life would probably be strengthening my mind to not care about what other people think so much and care about what the heck I want. So when I was younger, I was a people pleaser. I still am a people pleaser, to be honest, and I'm very scared of offending other people. And I'm more than happy to sacrifice my own benefits in order to make people happy. And that is something that it took me a very, very, very long time in order to overcome. And even now, it's still difficult to overcome certain situations where it's like, we're in a really awkward situation. I want to be the people pleaser. I want to make that person happy. But in order to make that person happy, I have to sacrifice my own benefits. And it took me a very long time to overcome this, but I did overcome it. And now I don't really care about what other people think as much. It's given me a lot more freedom to do what the heck I want. And that definitely was one of the hardest things for me to overcome. As for in-game, it's just understanding that a lot of people don't actually mean what they say. So a lot of people will call you retarded, call you an idiot, call you all these mean things in-game. But honestly, they don't really mean it half of the time. Like they're not actually directly attacking you and they don't honestly think that you're retarded or, or you're an idiot. It's just the way the internet works. And so just understanding, drawing the fine line between, oh, this guy's just trolling or, oh shit, this guy's actually serious is very important in game. Because if you take everything too seriously, you're going to get hurt. And if you take everything like a joke, you're going to hurt others. So you just have to kind of have a balance in the middle. What makes you personally feel drawn to MMO games such as Blade and Soul? Um, I honestly, I don't play many MMOs. I'm not really an MMO player, but Blade and Soul was just something that I really wanted to play at the time. And it also jump started my YouTube channel. So it's kind of, it's just like, a series of fortunate events which kind of got me into Blade and Soul. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know but I watched an anime called King's Avatar 
And after watching King's Avatar, I really wanted to play an MMO because the whole anime was about an MMO. And so Blade and Soul just seemed to match up almost perfectly with the anime because the anime is an MMO about Kung Fu fighting and Blade and Soul is about Kung Fu fighting. And I was just like, wow, you know, it's perfect. And I started playing it and I really enjoyed it. And then I found other content creators like Evil Do Us Harm, like Ekagen, who also played the game. I really liked their personalities. We work well together. And then we just started playing together. And by playing together, we also built our community. We built Guild. And, you know, it just grew on me. A very big part of Blade and Soul is actually the community that you build. So I do understand that Blade and Soul is quite a toxic community. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Those are the facts. But I surround myself with the positive people. So if you read the Blade and Soul subreddit, it's very, very toxic. However, do understand that the subreddit is a minority of the players. It's just the more vocal players. A lot of people who actually enjoy the game, they don't go on the social media. They don't go on to Twitter. They don't go on to Reddit. They just stay on the game. They just play the game and they're having a good time. And there's no need for them to preach how great the game is because they personally are enjoying the game and so they're just going to continue to enjoy it. It's the people who don't like the game that are the loudest. And this is something that just happens in all MMOs, happens in life in general. People who are negative are usually going to be the loudest. People who are positive are just going to keep it to themselves because they're content with what they have. So it's very important to just filter out all the negativity and just be like, okay, you know, these guys are just talking out of their asses. Or, oh, these guys actually have a valid point, but the way that they're approaching it is not effective. And by doing that, you will have a much better time playing Blade and Soul or playing whatever MMO you have. Because, you know, if you look at any MMO right now, Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars 2, uh, Black Desert Online, Blade and Soul, like there's a whole bunch of people, if you look at the subreddits, all of them are like dead game, dead game, oh, this game is dead, blah, blah, blah. If they're all dead games, then what do we have on the MMO genre, right? The funnier thing is a lot of people in Blade and Soul are like, oh, BDO's better. Then you go to BDO and people in BDO are like, oh, Final Fantasy XIV is better. And you go to Final Fantasy XIV and they're like, oh, some other game is better. And it's just like the stupid triangle of like, oh, this game's better. No, that game's better. No, this game's better. And you just go around and circle jerk each other. And it's really silly. It's really, really silly. Honestly, find a game that you enjoy and just play it. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no need to complain. Like, yes, I understand that when they do really shitty patch notes and they do really bad system changes, obviously we need to let the developers or let the community managers know that, hey, we're not happy with this. This is a problem. That's, you know, that's natural. We have to do that. But the way to approach it, there are so many different ways to approach a situation. And the worst thing that you can do, if you really want to kill Blade and Soul, the best thing that you can do is simply not play the game. If you really hate Blade and Soul and you really hate how the game is changing, the direction the game is going, and you're just sick of it, just uninstall Blade and Soul, move on to Final Fantasy XIV, move on to BDO, move on to another game. And honestly, by doing that, you are hurting Blade and Soul the most. However, if you stay here and just spout all this toxic stuff, that actually doesn't hurt the game as much as just leaving it. Just food for thought for the people who really hate Blade and Soul or just really negative about Blade and Soul. Because, you know, if the game dies, it dies. If it stays, it stays. I personally still love Blade and Soul. I really enjoy playing the game. And so I'm just going to continue to enjoy it. And, you know, I'm not happy with some of the changes they did. And I voiced my concerns, but I'm still going to play it. It's not because, oh, they changed this, this game's unplayable now. I'm not going to play it anymore. Because there are some promising things that are coming in the future. So I'm just simply just going to keep playing and wait for those changes to come in. And for a lot of people who are sick and tired of Blade and Soul, you guys should just stop playing and just come back in six months later. Maybe the game will get better for you. Or maybe it won't. If it doesn't, then, you know, whatever. Just move on to the next game. Anyway, that conversation or that question got a little bit dark, a little bit serious, but don't worry about it. Uh, I will be cutting this video a little bit short because it was getting a little bit too long and so I'm recording this as I was editing. So I will split this video up into two parts. So I think I answered around 20-ish questions, so it's kind of the halfway point. But uh, yeah, so I'm cutting the video short, but don't worry, part two will come out tomorrow. 
So, uh, yeah, excellent. Very nice. Anyway, if you liked the video, I would appreciate a subscribe. Or if you want to go the extra mile, please consider becoming a member. Speaking about members, I'd like to thank Kevin, Zillantex, Overgamers, Yatogami, Arisoya, Gonzola, Jeremy Chen, Nayana, Pearlstyle, Linaren, Toots McGee, Solar Hero, ST Sintu, and Ki for supporting the channel. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I'm happy because I have wine today. Ha <laughs> ha! What can I say except you're welcome for the heels that boo?